All right, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Structure Free Learning. And in this video, we're gonna do a dynamics example that uses the equations of motion with, uh, with a little projectile motion added in. And what we're gonna do is solve this thing symbolically. All right, and so what I have in this problem is I have kind of an incline with a rent, like kind of edge here and this particle, we'll say it's a negligible size with a mass M is, is sliding down this ramp here and uh, it's gonna leave the ramp here with some velocity and it's gonna do projectile motion and we wanna find out where is this gonna land. And that's really one of the challenges with symbolic problems is you gotta make sure you read the problem statement and you identify all the given variables or symbols. And in this case, our mass is gonna be unknown, our distance traveled on the incline will be unknown, the coefficient of kinetic friction is gonna be known, we'll have H1, H2, which are the heights here, and this angle theta, is also gonna be a known variable, this theta here. And what we wanna know, find is this distance r. And I'll try to keep color coordinated here so that you'll see that maybe everything in green will be a known, and then everything in blue will be something that we need to solve for, an unknown. All right, so the first thing to do in this problem is really the, dis is the tr distance or the traveling from here to here. Now we could use the principle of work and energy, but maybe you haven't gotten there yet or you're only taking physics. And so we're gonna use uh, the equations of motion or F equals MA. So the first thing I wanna do is draw my free body diagram. And oh, 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 one more thing that we have to note here is that it starts from rest. So it's released from rest. And we're gonna assume that this particle has enough mass and the angle is enough incline so that it doesn't stop in the middle of the ramp. But when we solve this symbolically, we can even do what's called a parametric study. But anyway, I'm getting all crazy. All right, here we go, here we go. So here, in, I'm gonna draw my free body diagram of this particle from the beginning where it's released from rest to and between somewhere where it leaves a ramp. So somewhere in between. So here is the particle, this angle is theta. And what we have in between here is that I like to draw the external force side and the inertial side. And I wanna label my coordinate system. So here, positive X will be down the ramp and positive Y will be perpendicular to that going, let's see, or the weight, W, a normal force from the ramp and a force of friction. And then here, for my inertial terms, I would have M-A-Y and M-A-X. And one of the things I know about this is because this particle is being released from rest and all the forces acting on this particle are constant, so the force of friction is not varying, the normal force won't be varying, uh, the weight is not varying, it's you know mass times gravity. So I know that my acceleration of this particle will also be constant, and that's really important later when we do the kinematics. So here, uh, because my particle is only moving in one direction, the acceleration in the y is zero, and now I can just write the equations of motion. So one of the challenges is always the geometry, and so just, to make sure that we're all on the same page with respect to the geometry, I know that this line right here, which represents the rest of the ramp here, this portion has an angle theta right there. And so if I just draw a horizontal line right here, I know that this is also the angle theta. I know the angle between the y and this horizontal is 90 minus theta, and which makes this also theta right here. And so now I can write the equations of motion using the rectilinear coordinate system. And so here, so if I go ahead, I'll do some of the forces in the x first, and this would be w sine theta minus ff equals max and in the y direction minus w cos sine theta plus the normal force of the ramp equals may which we know is zero so this whole term equals zero and we know that the force of friction here is the coefficient 
the kinetic coefficient times the normal force in the ramp. And, um, and in this case right here, let's see, it, based on what's given to me, I know W, I don't know if you can see that, W, I know theta, I know mu K, I know the mass, and my only unknowns in this case are, is the normal force on the ramp and the acceleration in the x direction. All right, so I have two equations, two unknowns. That means I can use both of the equ equations. And what I really want is solve for the acceleration of x. If I rearrange, I solve here, and I substitute this normal force into that equation of motion in the x direction, all right, and so again, my masses are known, but you know what? I can divide through by mass because every term has a mass in it. A, all right, and let's see, I know gravity, check. I know theta in this case. I know mu k, I know g, I know theta, and so now I can solve for ax. ax is an unknown that I solve for, so ax is equal to, and let's see, everything that I know is g sine theta, minus mu k g cosine theta. And this is, this is my, this is the acceleration in the x. So I'm able to solve for it and all the, everything in green means I know it. All right, so I'm good to go. I've solved for the acceleration in the x. And now that I know what the acceleration is, and if I look at it, as long as the angle theta is constant and the coefficient of kinetic friction is, is constant, then I know that my acceleration here is constant. And so I essentially have 1D motion with a constant acceleration. And so I've got all kinds of choices to solve for the velocity right before it leaves the ramp. So the next thing I wanna do, one, two, I'll call it three. And what I have here in this case, in this 1D kinematics, is I have an acceleration, which is my acceleration, AX, is a constant, constant. So it's just a number. And that means I can use all these 1D motion equations um, as a quick refresher. Here, I'll write some out here. We had like, if this was, uh, if I wanted velocity as a function of time, I'm gonna change that constant to AC so I don't have to write as much. So these are popular equations that are that come about from just integrating. And then if I combine, if I, sub, if I solve for time here and I substitute and to get rid of time in this position equation, if I combine these two essentially to get rid of time, I would get that Vx squared. I would get this right here. And this Xf minus X0 is delta S. This would be the change in position, delta S, at least according to what's given to me here. And so if I use this relationship here, what I have is, let's see, I will write this relationship out one more time. I'll have, in terms of delta S, I'll have and what I have right now is that, let's see, I've, I have delta S is given to me in the problem statement, and I solve for AX in the previous step using my equations of motion, and obviously I know the number two. Psst. All right, and let's see, and I know my initial velocity because it starts from rest. So I'll call this V0, I'll put it in green again, this in green, and I can square that number obviously, all right? And so what I have is an unknown Vx that I need to solve for. I need to solve for this business right here. And that is just a really a plug and chug. And so Vx, if I just rearrange this, Vx is equal to, this is the velocity as it leaves a ramp, is equal to hmm, the square root of two a, x delta s, 2ax times delta s, put a little dot there for the times, plus v0x squared. But in this case right here, because it starts from rest, this initial velocity in the x direction is zero. And so basically what we're saying is that the velocity in the x direction as it leaves a ramp, as after it travels the distance delta s is, uh, do, 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 square root of two times AX, which is, again, we solved it previously, times delta S. Ayo, all right, all right, all right. And if I, if you really, really, really needed to, you could salt, you could plug in this G, all this business right here, and that would just be, man, that's gonna look a little nasty. 
50. But this will be square root of 2 times delta S times G sine. Oh, I'll factor out a G. Make my life a little bit easier. 2 times delta S times G times sine theta minus mu k cosine theta. Yes. Wow. Look at because I'm doing things symbolically, I look all intelligent. But really, this is just a number, all right, with the velocity, the initial velocity equal to zero. So Vx now is just a number. Ao. All right, so now we got to do the projectile motion problem from here. Oh, snap. Guess what? So here, if I have h2 right here, obviously, you, can you see that h2 and delta s are related by theta? So essentially, even though I said h2 or delta s is given, h2 is given, they're all, they're all related. So if I wanted to put everything in terms of h2, I could also say that delta s is equal to, um, let's see, sine theta. I know that sine theta is equal to opposite h2 over the hypotenuse delta s. So I could also say delta s is h2 over sine theta, like this. And I could go back all the way over here and plug that in. I Oh, this is like punishment for doing things symbolically. Erg. All right. But it's all good. So this is what, and everything again is still known here. Life is good. Uh, and now I have here, in the projectile motion problem, what I have is, so in the projectile motion problem, what I have is this Vx, this crazy looking equation right here, which is really just a number, again, Vx, I have, a, I have this particle leaving at a velocity of, uh, doo -doo -doo, of Vx here. And I'm, I'm just gonna call that, if, if that's all right with you, now in the projectile motion problem, I will say that V0 is equal, this new initial velocity. In fact, here, let maybe i make life easier. Oh yeah, yeah, I'll call it V0, it's all good. This new initial velocity for the projectile motion problem. In fact, I'm essentially in this problem, it's a brand new problem, and I'm given from here that V0 is the Vx from the previous problem, it's this crazy looking number. This is my velocity, and I know this height here, this initial height, h, I think I called it h1, h1 right here, and I wanna find r. So given this initial height, I'm even given the angle at which this velocity is happening here. So this velocity, boom, this particle, is moving right here. This is V0. And I know the angle theta at which it's leaving right here. Boom, theta. So I'm also given theta in this case. That's unknown. And, 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 even though the dotted line is like the path of the projectile is off the center of mass of this drawing right here, we're gonna assume that again, that the particle's so itty bitty that we will just make it one line. So in fact, if you feel better, I could draw the path right here like this. And I could delete, I could erase all this other business. Oh no. All right. All right. And so now I, I want to establish, let's see, for my projectile motion problem, again, now I'm just, I have all these things. I have the angle, I have H1. I want to find, I want to find R. I want to find the horizontal distance that it traveled. And so here, to find R, let's see, I'm just doing a projectile motion problem. So the first thing I want to do is establish a coordinate system. And so here is the, I'm going to choose my origin of the coordinate system to be here, where my particle starts. Boom, right here. Here is X. Here is the Y direction right here, that's my new coordinate system for the projectile motion part, and my initial and final coordinates. So for my initial coordinates, I have, let's see, uh, here for my initial coordinates, I have x0, y0, and this is going to be 0, 0, and then my final coordinates, x, f, y, f, where my particle lands, so here is x0, y0, and right here is x, f, y, f, right here, my final coordinates, and that is going to be Again, we're assuming the particle is infinitesimally small. This is, you know, the particle is essentially right there. Don't judge me, judge yourself here. 
<laughs> and here I start again that this and this are the same point all right zero zero you're gonna have to believe me and this would be R and this would be negative H1 this is my final coordinates okay R and negative H1 uh, the horizontal dif distance and negative H1 and I know H1 but I don't know R that's what I'm trying to solve for all right, and so now I look at my 1D mo again. These are this. This is like curvilinear motion. I break up the motion into two. So here I look at now. I look at my horizontal motion right here, and in the horizontal direction, let's see. I have acceleration is zero, and my horizontal velocity v x would be v not x. And here, that just means that horizontal component of velocity is constant the whole time, which would be, if I, if I wanted to really compute this, again, I know V0, so it would be V0 cosine of the angle theta right here. And the horizontal position equation, which is what I'm really interested, is XF is equal to X0 plus V0 X. T. And again, if I make the appropriate substitutions, xf here is r, this is equal to x0, which is 0, and I know it in this case, so this x0 plus v0 cosine of theta times t, which is unknown. And uh, see, in this case here, x0 is 0, so I'll put that 0. So R is equal to V naught cosine theta times T. Now I look at my vertical motion and this will say it is positive upwards and the acceleration in the Y direction is negative G. All right. And again, if I, if I were to re write my velocity relationship, this would be VY, V0Y minus GT all derived by integrating and here would be and the position equation would be yf equals y0 plus v0yt minus one half gt squared. And again, v0y is something that we know because it's equal to v0 sine theta. And based on the direction, based on the direction of v0, it would be negative v0 sine theta we'd have a negative result. And so I could go ahead and substitute all this business here. I would have YF oh, over here. Let's see. I know YF. YF is negative H1 is equal to Y0, Y0, which we knew already, Y0, and we was zero, but here it's all good. I'll just write it for now. And then V0Y is negative V0 sine theta times T, which is unknown, minus, I know the minus, <laughs> one half, I know that, I know G, times T squared. Yes, and what? I have one equation, one unknown here. This is getting ridiculous symbolically. I wish I could just throw in some numbers right now, but I'll leave that up to you right here. But I've got, I've got essentially a quadratic equation here, all right? And I can solve, you know, I can probably, and I'm probably gonna end up being able to solve directly for R right here. And so if I, if I think about this, let's see, Y zero is zero, yay, like this. And, uh, you know, I put things together here with this equation. This will be, let's see, I'll, I'll solve it for zero is, I'll bring the H1, so this will be H1 minus V0 sine theta times T. And my unknowns right now are T, which I'll circle here, and then the distance R. All right, so if I, if I go through some solving, I'll rearrange this first equation, the horizontal motion equation here. I'll call this like one, and I'll call this two. So I'll rearrange one, which would look like this to, to solve for time. So it'd be T. And then I solve, I substitute this time into it too. And this would look like, hey, oh, look at those V zeros are gonna cancel out. That's convenient, hey. All right, hey, there it goes. And, and, whew. all right. And now if I just, 
You know, now I gotta solve for r. So here, let me simplify this equation a little bit. Sine theta over cosine theta is tangent theta. All right, all right. And now, man, now you can set up a solution for r using, which, man, this is like crazy doing this symbolically. No wonder students want numbers. I would want numbers too, dang. I think this is it. <laughs> this is pretty whack. So here, I think this is the, the solution for ra the, the distance. I hope not, but if it is, it's terrible. Uh, and I hope I made a mistake somewhere and that it simplifies even better. But this is for you, Jay. And here, check this out. Check this out, man. Let's see. Uh, this V naught business way back up here, this V zero, you could substitute that back all the way into here for V zero if you wanted to, which, oh snap. So V naught squared is, um, is this business right here inside. And, and then you can, you know, have things all in terms of just the variables that were given at the beginning of the problem. Hopefully that was fun and somewhat interesting and not too torturous. Let me know if I've made any mistakes. And if you like what I'm doing, I hope you will subscribe, like, and share uh, the video. Let me know if you have any questions. Take it easy. Structure free.